In this video, we're going to review some things about the dot product, and then we're also going to look at uh, some calculus with vectors. Okay, So first of all, finding the dot product, remember the dot product gets us down to one number. It is So the dot product for this first one, we do 3 multiplied by negative 2 plus 2 multiplied by 1. So negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. That's our dot product. So this next one will be 5 multiplied by 3. Maybe I should write it this way so it doesn't look like a dot product. And 7 multiplied by 1. So 15 plus 7. Our dot product is 22. Now the angle between two vectors. Remember this all stems from law of cosines. And the formula is that two vectors when dotted v dot w will be equal to the magnitude of v multiplied by the magnitude of w multiplied by the cosine of the angle between it. So to figure out the angle I should divide both sides by the magnitude and of course we'll take the inverse cosine at the end. So first of all dotting the two uh, 1 multiplied by 5 plus 6 multiplied by 2. That would be the top. And then we need the magnitude of V. Well, of course, that's going to be 1 squared plus 6 squared. And the other one is going to be uh, 5 squared plus 2 squared. Like that. So let's figure this out. We've got 5 plus 12. The top is 17. The bottom uh, is the square root of 37 multiplied by the square root of 29. Like that. And this is equal to cosine of theta. So I will take the inverse cosine of both sides, and that will be theta. And you can do that on your calculator. But remember this formula. It's really important, and it comes, again, from the law of cosines. All right, so some calculus with vectors, the big things we know how to do, limits, derivatives, and integrals. All of this is actually pretty easy because all of it kind of goes exactly like you think it would. For example, the limit as t approaches 2 of 2t, two well, that's just 4. We just do the same thing we always did, just plugging the value in. Uh, 4 times 2 squared plus 2, so 4 times 4 plus 2 is 18. This is the limit of what that vector approaches when t is 2. Uh, this next thing, e to the 0, so it's just 1i, and 7 times 0j, so 0j. So you could just say it's i is what we're approaching. So it really is as easy as just plugging in. You can, of course, use L'Hopital's rule if you need to, but your first step, like always, should just be plugging the value of t in and saying this is what this vector is approaching. For derivatives, again, it's nothing too shocking. We say, well, here's how this piece of the vector was, was moving. So the derivative would be 14t. And this other piece, we need some product rules. So first, derivative of the second plus second, derivative of the first. And there is our derivative vector. And over here, we'd have 18t squared i plus 1 over tj. So just the, uh, and I can take away this bracket since this one is i and j notation. Okay, so again, it's nothing overly complex. You know, we shouldn't, we shouldn't uh, have too much trouble with this. And to integrate, kind of the same thing. We take each of these pieces separately, you know, we say, okay, the antiderivative of 2t, we'd have 2 thirds t cubed evaluated at 4 and 2, and we'd have 3 halves t squared evaluate at 4 and 2. Now if I actually do that, and I, I did that on my calculator, and I'm going to write it just above here, I'm going to have 112 over 3, and I'm going to have 18, and that would be my, uh, my vector integral. Okay, And of course here, from 0 to 2, we would, again, you know, we'd integrate, we'd have uh, t to the 4th, so 6 over 3 halves, t to the 4th, plus um, 
We'd have to use a little substitution, so we'd have one half e to the t squared j. We'd evaluate at two and zero. Uh, and again, I'm I'm running out of room, so I just do this on my calculator. So the important thing I think you know to re remember is you're really going to evaluate both pieces because you're going to leave them in their two components. So this first one, when you plug in the numbers, is going to be 24i, uh, and this other one. If you plug in 2, you're going to have uh, 1 half uh, e to the 4th. And if you plug in 0, you're going to have uh, 1 half. And that will be the j component. So that would be your answer. Now, to find a tangent vector. Well, you really still need the same types of things, right? You still need a point, which uh, we can get, of course, just plugging in. 1 in, so the natural log of 1 is 0, and 3 times 1 the 4th is 3. But we also need to know the slope. So let's get our derivative vector. We'd have 1 over t and 12t cubed. Now if I plug 1 into that, I get 1 and 12. Okay. Now here's how I write my uh, my vector because it's a tangent vector so it's not a tangent line it will have two components so the point gives the kind of initial starting spot and this is the vector that represents the slope so I write the tangent vector as 0 plus 1 T so the starting point and then how it's moving and the other would be 3 plus 12 T. And those that's my vector that's tangent to that point. Now, I just showed here you know what this kind of looks like graphically that the tangent vector is coming off this curve uh, and again it has some physics property, you know, it's coming off with this uh, with the same uh, slope as the curve and and uh, We'll talk more about that later, but I just wanted to show here how to make it. And finally, finding the vector v, if v prime is that and v of 0 is 5, 2. Well, we're trying to work back to the original vector using the um, derivative, so of course we need the antiderivative. So v of t. So I've got 3 halves t squared plus a constant, and I've got 2 thirds t cubed plus a constant. Don't have to be the same constant. Well, I know that if I plug 0 in for t, I should get 5 and 2. So that's going to mean that the constant, this first constant, is 5, because 3 halves times 0 squared plus c has to be 5, and the other one is going to be 2. There is my vector.